solution stoichiometry. So in chapter 9, we learned about stoichiometry. We can do this with solutions as well. So here was our, our stoichiometry chant, right? Grams to moles to moles to grams. Well, this is going to be a variation on this. So the variation will come at one end or the other or possibly at both. So if, if we, instead of having a mass, if we have a volume, liters of solution with a molarity, we can go from liters to moles to moles to grams. Or we may end up going at the end to a volume of a solution. So it's a variation. The thing that is the same in all stoichiometry problems is moles to moles in the middle. Sometimes in an attempt to give students a simpler problem to solve on an exam, so it won't take as long, I'll give them a mole-mole stoichiometry problem because it's easier. And some students are fine with that, and other students say, but there's got to be grams in here somewhere. And so they do moles to grams to grams to moles, which just doesn't work. It's very creative, but we're not necessarily big fans of that sort of creativity in chemistry. So remember, in the middle of stoichiometry, it's always moles of one thing to moles of another thing, because moles relate particles. And that's how chemicals interact. It's particle to particle. So let's do an example here. What volume of 0.230 molar HCl will react with 3.40 grams of sodium carbonate? And the equation is given to you. So this is stoichiometry. Let's use that equation to organize the numbers that are given to us. So here we've got 0.23 molar HCl. So I'm going to write that number under HCl in the equation. 0 0.230. Should I write capital M or moles per liter? I should write moles over liter because that points out to me that, oh, I've got two units in here. Otherwise, you're going to have that capital M, and you're, it's not going to cancel out with anything. So always write moles per liter. 3.40 grams of sodium carbonate. So 3.40 grams of this guy. What's the question? First two words. What volume? What volume of HCl? So that's what I'm looking for. Question mark, what would be a convenient volume unit? Liters. So that's what I'm looking for. So then, you know, we need to put a, we need to put together a path. So we're starting with grams of sodium carbonate, and we're going to end up with liters of HCl. What's at the middle of all stoichiometry problems? Moles to moles. So I need to go from grams of sodium carbonate, I didn't leave enough room here, to moles. OK, I'm going to start over, because that's just bad. I'm going to, well, I'll just stick it in here. We'll, we'll make it work. Grams of sodium carbonate to moles of sodium carbonate to moles of HCl, to liters of HCl. Everybody OK with the path? It's a variation on grams to moles to moles to grams. It's grams to moles to moles to liters. So that's our path, and we're going to set up an equation here. It's going to have three unit factors. So we're going to start with 3.40 grams of sodium carbonate. And we're going to multiply. And we're going to have moles of sodium carbonate. 
on the top. And then next one is going to be moles of HCl. And the last one's going to be liters of HCl. Just following the path that I wrote down. Make a plan, follow the plan. I need to cancel these units out. So I take moles HCl from the previous term and divide by that so the units cancel out. And down here, I'm going to divide by moles of sodium carbonate. Those are going to cancel out. And here I'm going to have grams of sodium carbonate down there. And that will cancel out. Get all the units in. So they, they're canceling out and they're giving me what I need. And then I go looking for the numbers associated with these unit factors. The middle one is always the easiest, the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Where do I get the numbers for this? Do you remember? From the balanced chemical equation. One mole of this reacts with two moles of that. So one mole of sodium carbonate for every two moles of HCl. What can I do with this number? Moles per liter. There's moles per gram, but that's a different compound. Oh, look, moles and liters of HCl. Liters is on the top, and moles is on the bottom. 0 0.230 goes with the moles, so it's going to go on the bottom. 0 0.230. I didn't leave enough space. Typical. What do I do over here? I need the molar mass of sodium carbonate. So I've got 2 times the mass of sodium plus the mass of carbon plus 3 times the mass of oxygen. Does anybody have that? It's a race. 105.99. The molar mass is the mass of one mole. So one mole of sodium carbonate weighs 105.99 grams. I got everything in place. I go left to right, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. 3.4 times 1 divided by 105.99 times 2 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 0.23. And how many significant figures should I have? How many in this number? Three. How many in this number? How many in these numbers? Exact. Those are exact. How about in 105.99? Five. So we'll go with three then, right? Three is the smallest number. 0 0.279 liters of HCl. Any questions? Another example. Given that 27.5 milliliters of 0 0.210 molar lithium iodide solution reacts with 0 0.133 molar lead to nitrate solution, what volume of lead nitrate solution is required for complete precipitation? Wow, right? We can do this. This is stoichiometry, and we're going to use the equation, and we're going to pull those numbers out and write them down so that we can see what we're dealing with. Because there's all these names and formulas all over the place. So, 27.3 milliliters of lithium iodide. Which of these guys is lithium iodide? The second one, right? This, it looks like Lil, but it, that's L-I, capital I. So 27.5 is the volume of that. So 27.5 milliliters of 0 0.210 molar lithium iodide. So that's the concentration, 0.210 moles per liter. 
okay? Moles per liter. And that's reacting with 0.133 molar lead to nitrate solution. So even if you're a little rough on your nomenclature, we should be able to pick the one that's lead nitrate, right? This one has lead and nitrate, and so that must be it. Because this is lead and iodide, and that's lithium and nitrate. So 0.133 moles per liter. What question are they asking? What volume of lead nitrate? So question mark liters. You could pick milliliters. I'm going to pick liters. So this is what we're trying to find. That means we have to start with this one. There are two numbers associated with this. Look at the units. Milliliters, moles per liter. Which one is going to be a unit factor? Moles per liter. You can't have a unit factor with just one unit. It has to have two different units. So this is a unit factor. This is what we're going to start with. So our path, we're starting out here with milliliters of LII, and we want to find liters of PBNO32. What do we have to do in the middle? Moles and moles. So we're going to go from milliliters of lithium iodide to moles of lithium iodide. To moles of lead nitrate. I should have zoomed in, that's a mess. Okay? So let's let's start doing this. Twenty seven point five milliliters of L I times I'm going to have moles of a little more space moles of L I L I I. It reminds me of a a friend I had when I was younger. Her last name was E, spelled I I. Very unusual Japanese name. So this is Li. Moles of Li to moles of big messy name. Moles of PB, I'll write it better this time, NO32. And from moles of that to liters of lead nitrate. So Previous unit comes to the denominator. This cancels that one. And moles LII -I cancels that one. And milliliters of LII -I cancels that one. Okay? Let's do the middle one first. Always nice to start with something that's more simple. These numbers come from the equation. One mole of lead nitrate for every two moles of lithium iodide. So two moles of lithium iodide, one mole. No, I wrote that in the wrong place. Um, one mole of lead nitrate and two moles of lithium iodide. Let's do the one on the end. Moles and liters. For lead nitrate, we have 0.133 moles per liter. So I'm going to write 0.133 in front of moles. And if you really want a number in the numerator there, it would be 1. So that leaves this guy. Moles per milliliter. Well, here we've got moles per liter. Did I screw up? No, I don't think so. Do you remember what we did 
several slides ago. We said, how many milliliters is one liter? A thousand. So I could write this over a thousand milliliters. That would solve my issue here, wouldn't it? Not the only way to do that. That's what I'm going to do. 0 0.210 moles per 1,000 milliliters. The other way you could do that is you could leave this one as moles per liter, and you could convert the milliliters to liters first. That would also work. So 27.5 times 0 0.210 divided by 1,000 times 1 divided by 2 times 1 divided by 0.133 equals. So this equals 0 0.0217 liters. Now that's that's a small number of liters, so maybe milliliters would be a nicer, excuse me, a nicer unit, but it didn't specify, so liters is fine. Any questions? This is not only the end of chapter 10, this is the end of new material for the semester. No cheering? You want more? I got raised hands in the back.